as they sing the hymn, O Thou Who Camest From Above. to our cathedral here in the center of Chester, where you join our regular congregation and cathedral choir, as well as our guests from the missionary diocese of Wakefield. More than 200 people came from the Wakefield area yesterday to be part of the life of 19 churches in Chester for a few days. Bands played, balloons were released, the Lord Mayor welcomed our guests, and a special flag flies from the cathedral. Churches are calling the visit their jigsaw week. Jigsaws are made up of pieces, and if one piece is missing, the jigsaw is spoiled. Jigsaw week is about sharing another kind of peace. Jesus spoke of giving his disciples his peace. And our week together is about sharing the peace of Jesus with those who find it missing from their lives. Each church has its own team of visitors from Wakefield, and this morning we at the cathedral welcome amongst others the provost of Wakefield Cathedral, John Allen, and their bishop, Nigel McCulloch. So our act of worship continues.
psalmist now invites us to lift up our inward eyes to the living God, from whom comes our eternal help, Psalm 121. Prophet Isaiah tells of his vision of God from chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. Here ends the first reading.
the writer of the letter to the Hebrews, contrasts people of faith who have not known Jesus with what is expected of us who have known him. All these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Here ends the second reading.
believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit upon the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Father, we shall be prayed. Lord, be thy name. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, 
And grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we sing of the greatness of God's love and mercy. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Rhubarb. Do you know, I've always wanted to say that in a cathedral, but the point is that most rhubarb is grown in Wakefield. And we're proud of our Yorkshire fruit, our veg and our flowers, and our harvest festivals. And I was at one last week. Flowers in perfect bloom, not a thing out of place, prize vegetables and fruit, looking as if they'd been polished to a high sheen. Magnificent. And then it struck me. When they were putting it all together, that pick of the crop, what did they do with the bruised apples and the pears with maggot holes or the misshapen vegetables? You know, I long for the day when I go into a church and see, surrounded by all the magnificent flower and harvest displays, a little pile of the broken and bruised leftovers, the rejects, up there on the altar beneath the cross in the really important place of honour, as a reminder of the truth that it is the bruised and broken and rejected who are closest to the heart of God. It's easy to forget that with all the fun and razzmatazz of this jigsaw week. And incidentally, I didn't choose that title. I can't stand jigsaws myself. When our children were small, someone lent my wife three of those really difficult jigsaws. And our kids went and emptied them out together all over the floor in a terrible pile and mix-up. Took ages to sort out, trying to match the pieces to the picture. But in a way, that's what we're about this week. I bet when we go into the pubs and schools and homes of this lovely city of Chester, we'll come across people who'll tell us that in some part of their life, they're in a mess or mixed up and confused. And I know for myself that the best way of picking up the pieces, sorting out the mess, 
making sense of life is to put my faith in Jesus and try and match my life to the picture, the pattern that he gives us to follow. It's a pattern summed up beautifully in a story about St. John, the disciple who was closest to Jesus. When he was an old man and no longer able to say very much, people would bring their children to meet him and they'd say, John, tell them what Jesus said. And John's reply was always just three words, love one another. I think we're a long way from that and from God's kingdom of justice and peace in our confused and battered dysfunctional society. Last month, my 19-year-old daughter was beaten up in a totally unprovoked attack by a gang of boys. She had a black eye, concussion, bruised ribs. I suppose by today's standards, she got off quite lightly. But my wife and I were worried and angry. And I know that when I get talking with people this week, it won't be long before somebody says, what an awful world we live in. And they'll give worse examples of the violence, the pride, the prejudice in our selfish me-first society. And then somebody will say, what can we do about it? G.K. Chesterton, famous Christian author, once wrote a letter to the Times. Sir, what's wrong with the world? I am yours sincerely, G.K. Chesterton. Spot on. I, 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 I. That's what needs sorting out first. You see, the, the profound essence of our Christian faith is blindingly simple. And there's a verse in Galatians that makes the very point. I, no, not I, but Christ lives in me. But crossing out that I and meaning it demands a lot from us. The story is told of Archbishop William Temple. He was a great leader of missions. And once he was conducting a mission for students, and it was the last night of the mission, the final service. And they were singing that wonderful hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And just before the last verse, Temple stopped the singing and said, if you don't mean these next words, then don't sing them. If you think you know all there is to know about the Christian faith, then sing these words at the tops of your voices. But if you want to know more, then sing these words very softly. And Temple's biographer describes the moving experience of hearing 2,000 young students singing very softly these words, where the whole realm of nature mine, that where an offering far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. It was that kind of demand that we heard about in the first lesson when God's call came to Isaiah in the temple. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah, faced with the awe and majesty of God, felt so surprised and unworthy and useless until overwhelmed by God's forgiveness and love, he offered himself. Here am I, send me. God still speaks in ways that can surprise. One confirmation I'll never forget when the people came out from their pews to be confirmed, they were each carrying a card with their name on, and that happens quite often. But on this occasion, one young lad had picked up the wrong card. It hadn't got his name on. In fact, when I looked, there he was holding this card, and on it it said, reserved. <laughs> Which, of course, was absolutely right theologically because God does have a place reserved for everybody 
whoever they are, whatever their age, however unsure, however inadequate they feel. There isn't one person who is beyond the reach of his love. And I wear my bishop's ring to remind me of that. In the middle, there's a precious stone, a symbol of a bishop's authority, I suppose, but to me, far more important. It reminds me that every person is precious to God, every person a jewel to be cherished, every person made uniquely in his image. And it's because of that that every one of us has the capacity to become Christ-like to the people we live and work with, seeing Christ in them and they seeing Christ in us. A tall order? Well, here we are in this historic cathedral today, surrounded by the witness of saints through the ages, who sometimes were very severely tested. But as the lesson from Hebrews put it, they persevered. And why? Because they kept before them the life-changing picture of God's love in Jesus. At a school I went to, there were these two little five-year-old boys, and one of them saw that I was wearing a cross, and he said, what's that? And I said, it's my cross of Jesus. And the other little boy said, he's dead. Yes, I said, but he's alive again. No, he isn't, said the boy, he's dead. Well, I replied, I believe that even though he died, he's alive again now. And the little boy looked at me and he said, it's all right, I was just testing you. <laughs> May we stand up to whatever tests face us this week and proclaim our faith in the living Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray. Lord, this is your world in all its splendor, order, and beauty. You have given to humankind the stewardship of your creation. You have called us to share in the establishment of your kingdom of justice and peace. We pray for all people, especially at this time for the people of Central Africa, Cyprus, and Northern Ireland. We remember especially the family of Warrant Officer James Bradwell. Bless our leaders, locally, nationally, and internationally. Remove all pride and prejudice, and give them humility and integrity in all their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ, prayed that all his followers might be one, and through their mutual love for each other, bring others to believe in you and enjoy the living presence of Christ. We pray for the Church, especially that part of it which we know and serve. Unite our diversity in worship, witness and service, that we may be Christ-like to the people among whom we live and work. Bless the leaders of your church, especially at this time, Peter Foster, as he prepares to come among us as bishop of this diocese of Chester. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus sent his disciples into all the world to proclaim the good news for all humanity and to further his kingdom of love, where human dignity is affirmed and all are helped to find life in abundance. Help us, Lord, in this jigsaw week to follow the pattern of Jesus Christ's own example of self-giving love 
and to share his rich blessings with all who come in any kind of need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus had compassion on the multitudes, and he fed them, on the sick, and he healed them, on the poor, and he exalted them. Be present, Lord, with all who suffer at this time, especially those who are without the means needed to survive in our own society. Bless the work of all those working in this area to offer hope and love to those who have no hope in today's society. And give us a measure of your son's compassion that we may meet their need as and where they are in accordance with your will. Bring all who are sick or in any kind of distress to that wholeness of body, mind and spirit which is your will for all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, accept our prayers. Give us the will to live and work for those things for which we have prayed. And bring us with all the saints to share in the glory of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now a hymn referring to Jesus as our servant king.
May God, who takes life's broken pieces, give you unbroken peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. That service of choral matins came from Chester Cathedral. It was led by Canon Michael Rees. The preacher was the Right Reverend Nigel McCulloch, Bishop of Wakefield. The director of music was Graham Eccles and the organist Edward Wellman. Next week we go to St Columns Cathedral in Londonderry for a festival matins conducted by the very Reverend Cecil Orr.